Hello! So, welcome to another reading vlog. It is currently Tuesday, I think, so I'm not too late starting this weekly reading vlog. We're now into May, so uh, this month I'm gonna try and decide what I'm doing with my life. Like, April was my month to just, like, muck around and rest and relax. And I don't want to put too much pressure on myself to do stuff in May either, but I at least need to think about doing some things, I guess. Ah, but I am going to also still be continuing my reading. Um, let's start with audiobooks. So this is going to be a Wheel of Time kind of week. Um, I've started reading book five, The Fires of Heaven. I'm not very far into it. I'm still waiting for my new headphones to arrive so that I can listen to audiobooks while I'm out on walks and runs and stuff, but hopefully they'll arrive today and that'll fix that problem because I've got The Fires of Heaven and New Spring. I don't actually think they're too long. I think New Spring, which is the, the sequel, prequel, the prequel to The Wheel of Time, um, I think that's only 17 hours, and then The Fires of Heaven is 36 hours, which is long, but like kind of average Wheel of Time book length. Although I was looking at it, oh, it's way up there. Book eight doesn't look that long. I've got seven and eight up there and I think I might read them physically rather than audiobook just to try something different um, because honestly I just looked at the chapter name and it's this place name and I was like oh that's how it's spelled so I think I need to read it physically for a little bit just to get all the weird spellings into my head. Um, other things that I'm going to be reading this week primarily I'm going to focus on reading The Excalibur Curse by Kirsten White. So this is the third and final book in the Camelot Rising series. So I'm making progress at continuing and completing series. Uh, it's basically a Camelot retelling with a few like gender switches and also Guinevere is a changeling, not Guinevere. I didn't love the first book but then I read the second book and I actually quite enjoyed it so I'm interested to see how I will feel about this third book. I feel like the cover is really beautiful and I also feel like I must be one of the first people at the library to get this one out because it's like in pristine condition. But I haven't started it yet so I will still need to do that. This one, it's massive. I am not going to finish this this week but I'm going to try and start it. This is the fifth book in this epic fantasy series that I've been reading, The Crown of Stars. If you've watched any of my videos lately, you'll have heard me mention it. Basically, people fighting over the kingdom, different magical creatures, also like kind of these pathways through the stars and this celestial type magic, astronomy, maths magic going on. I don't really know what the focus of this particular book will be, but I will start it. It's like uh, 903 pages long so it's gonna take me a long time because these books take me a long time to get through them anyway but we'll see if I can find some couch time for reading this. This is not a bed book because it's too big and I just would rather go to sleep than read it or at least that's what always ends up happening when I try to read it at night. So that's my reading. I don't know what else is happening this week. I think later in the week we're going to a sculpture garden as kind of my birthday celebration and then also Maybe my new laptop will arrive this week because my old one is having a complete meltdown but I'm not sure if it'll actually arrive this week even though it says this week but fingers crossed because I would love a new laptop and like a new laptop might be just the thing to make me uh, motivated and productive. Maybe. We'll see what happens. Hello. So I don't really know what I'm doing yet but I have bought myself a ring light so that I no longer have to do weird DIY desk lamp lighting situations, maybe I can just have good lighting regardless of what it's doing outside with the weather. Maybe? I guess we'll play with it a little bit. I am trying to be a little bit productive, trying to get my shit sorted out. I think May is going to be the month of just like trying to sort out all the shit that I should have done, like the basic level of housework that I should have been keeping up with. Let, let's try and catch up on some of that stuff and then maybe in June I can start thinking about what do I want to do next. Maybe. Anyway, uh, I have today been doing like the kind of the thing where you read one chapter and then you do one productive thing except that I've been alternating between reading a chapter and watching a booktube video as my fun things and then I've been alternating between booktube video stuff and housework stuff as my productive things. 
So it's kind of like a cycle of activities. It's working quite well. It means I don't get too frustrated about like having to maintain my focus for a long time on one thing, but I can also kind of be productive. And also like I don't just focus on one thing and forget about all the other things. And I'm still doing fun things, so I still feel like I'm having a fun time, not just a focus doing stuff time. I don't know. It's kind of working. We'll see how we go. Uh, but I do want to update you on my reading. So the book I've been reading is The Excalibur Curse. I think I'm about, let's say, a quarter of the way through it. And I have kind of remembered what was happening. That's always my struggle when you pick up a book from a series that you didn't read the last books from for quite a long time. So at this point, Guinevere has been captured by some of their enemies and she's off trying to survive that. Um, she kind of betrayed Lancelot in order to get in the situation she's, she's in now. She thought it would go better than it is. Uh, also, Arthur's off in some other kind of drama. I am enjoying it. Um, basically, she's in a situation where... She, I don't want to, I don't want to give spoilers, but um, we've got Morgana and she's doing some cool sorceress witchy stuff, which I really liked. As well, there is this Pictish princess uh, and she, I just really like her. She's really genuine and blunt, but also really fun. And one thing I do really like about the series is all the female friendships. So uh, this Pictish princess and Guinevere are kind of forming this friendship, even though in some ways they're on opposite sides from each other. And I've remembered a few of the mysteries that are going on in this, things we don't know. So I'm looking forward to finding out more about those as I continue this. I would say the writing style's like a little bit simple. Sometimes Guinevere's a little bit angsty, but overall it's not too bad. Um, the other thing I have been doing is listening to Fires of Heaven. So I don't have them here, but I finally got my new headphones delivered, Bluetooth headphones, which I have been nervous about before because I always thought my ears are funny shaped and they would just fall out. But actually I bought some, they're not too bad. And it's been really good for like doing gardening and housework while listening to my audiobook. So I think I'm about a third of the way through Fires of Heaven. It's not that far, uh, but I did also decide I was going to try and get to New Spring this week, and I realized that my calculations about the fact that it had been released around the same time as the books that I'm reading at the moment, that's not right. I don't know why I thought that. It's wrong. So I'm going to put New Spring off until later, which is good because it means I don't have to rush through Fires of Heaven as much, and if I'm not rushing through it, I feel like I can be more engaged. And I'm not sure if it's me or the book, but I am feeling like I'm following what's happening in this particular book a lot better. I did notice there were a couple of bits where Rand kind of re-explained things that you should have known from previous books, and I'm not sure if that's because they're trying to make it so the book could be accessible to people who haven't read the previous books, or just because Robert Jordan realized that people had been a bit overwhelmed by all the information about the world that he'd given them in previous books, and that he needed to like reiterate the most important parts to make sure people had got those things. So I did appreciate those sections, even though actually I did remember all those things, but it's just nice to put it back into your mind. I will say I don't really know what the focus is of this book, despite being a third of the way into it. It's kind of the girls are still tracking down the Black Aja and trying to find these corrupt people within the Aes Sedai, and then the guys... Actually Perrin hasn't even been in it at all yet, which is kind of annoying. Matt's done very little, getting a lot of Rand going blah blah blah. Rand's not my favorite. Also he kind of falls into that thing where like he's still very young, he's had barely any experience in this like leadership type position, and somehow he's like an amazing leader and everybody respects him, and there was one bit where he was like, oh these leaders of this town are so stupid, they're doing everything wrong, and it's like these are all men that have been doing this for years, and yes they might be bad, probably, they're not the best, but also they've been doing it a lot longer than you, so you probably could still learn something from them, and you shouldn't just assume that everything they're doing is wrong, because maybe you just don't have the full context because you're new to this. But of course, like, he's the hero of the story, so he's gonna be perfect. It's a little bit unbelievable. Although I guess some stuff with the whole Wheel of Time might make an argument for it not being as ridiculous. Maybe. I do like the Wheel of Time stuff and the dreaming stuff. We are getting quite a lot of dreaming, which I'm appreciating. So I'm not minding this one, and hopefully I can still finish it by the end of the week, because I do want to keep going with this series. I want to keep up the momentum. But anyway, 
I need to move on to my next cycle of things to do. So I'm going to go and do that and catch up with you guys later. Hello. So the problem with this ring light is going to be that it's a little bit annoying to move around. So I'm going to be tempted just to always film my updates here, which is a little bit boring for a vlog. Although you know what's boring? A COVID world where you don't really go anywhere. But today I'm going to go somewhere. So that's exciting. Um, Basically, they did this thing where the government funded a bunch of like vouchers. I think it was government funded uh, a bunch of vouchers that you could use at local touristy places. So there's the sculpture garden that we always would drive past and think, wow, that looks really cool. But the tickets were too expensive. But now we essentially get to go for free, which is very exciting. Anyway, I thought I'd update you just before Jace arrives for us to go to that. I read a bunch of this last night. I'm... Oh, still not quite halfway, maybe a third of the way through. I'm really liking it. One thing that was a bit confusing though is this is now got a part where people are communicating through dreams very similarly to the way that people are communicating through dreams in The Wheel of Time. However, the rules for the dreams are slightly different. And so I was getting a little bit confused because they were doing certain things in these dreams. And I was like, you can't, you can't do that. That's not right. But it is right these kind of dreams which are different from the wheel of time dreams i'm really liking it it's very relationship focused but i like the relationships that it's exploring and the way it's exploring it and i guess it's exploring like the different kinds of connections you can have to people with this ring light this book is very shiny isn't it i have to try and hold it this way for you all right that's all i really have to say i'm enjoying this i'm gonna keep going with it try and finish it this weekend i also think i'm about two-thirds of the way through the fires of heaven and like, it's fine. It's, I definitely don't think The Wheel of Time is going to be my favorite series, unless things change a lot at the end of the series. But I feel like every update I'm going to say the same thing. I am enjoying the circular stuff. We didn't get much of it in the last third. Actually, so far in the last third, the bit I'm enjoying the most is basically there's been um, a power breakdown in the Aes Sedai, who are these women with these magical powers, and now a woman who used to be in a very powerful powerful position is no longer in a powerful position. And it's interesting seeing how she's still kind of trying to participate in the bigger events. But as well, I'm just realizing we haven't even had any of Perrin in this book. And I think this is the problem, like, because there's so many different characters, you get big chunks of one group or one particular character, and the other ones just kind of get forgotten. I like it best when it's like flicking back and forwards between them regularly, but often you just get like big chunks of one bit of the story and it's like the rest of the story has been forgotten. But I think this is a problem you often get with epic fantasy. So it's not specific to the Wheel of Time. And I'm sure it's very hard to make the stories all weave together better, but I think I like it better when it all weaves together better, especially the Wheel of Time and the whole concept of time and the weave would argue that it would fit better with the story. But as I've said previously, often it's the ending of the Wheel of Time books that are always the best. So I'm looking forward to the last third and I'm looking forward to the sculpture garden. I fall into the sky I'm 
feeling tears, but I didn't want to cry. Even the bright stars burn out someday. So, I just got back from a run, and then there was this annoying beep every minute in my house, and it was really high pitched and annoying. And I couldn't figure out where it was coming from. I eventually figured out it was coming from this wardrobe. And I still couldn't tell where. And I have now pretty much emptied out the whole wardrobe. Before I finally found on the shelf uh, a smoke alarm that I bought a while ago. During a stressful week at work. And because I, I was having trouble installing it I think. And so as a consequence I put it in the wardrobe under some other things. And that was a long time ago. And finally it was like. My batteries are running out and it started beeping and uh, now all my stuff is on the sofa in the spare room bed and I was meaning to clear out this wardrobe but not this week but maybe it's gonna have to be this week. Fun! So anyway while we're here let me update you on my reading. I was listening to Fires of Heaven on my run and I think I've got about seven hours left of listening to it so I guess I'll try and get to it tomorrow, but I might not make it by the end of the week quite. I don't really have much to say about it. This last section has mainly really been following these characters that are hiding in a circus. And it, in some ways it's just a little bit silly. And a lot of the other stuff that's happening is like angsty teen romance stuff. There was one bit which was kind of about the circular time stuff and these heroes that like every circle will be born again. And like they have all these heroic tales about themselves. And that I really liked. But that's just me repeating that I always like the circular time stuff in this story. Oh, I'm losing my voice for some reason. Uh, the other thing I've been reading is here. So I've been reading The Excalibur Curse. I'm now, I think, about halfway. I am actually really enjoying it. I'm surprised because I almost DNF'd this series at one point. I was, after the first book, I was like, eh. But I gave the second book a try and I kind of liked it. And this third book, I'm quite liking it. I like the different kinds of magic. And I also like how Guinevere keeps kind of being put in these difficult situations where she has to choose which one of her loved ones she wants to betray basically because they're all against each other and she can't make everybody happy. And I really like kind of that inner conflict about how she's going to make these decisions. So I'm going to read some more of that tonight. I need to go and do something with my hair at the moment. Really I need to dye the roots but I'm probably not going to do that tonight. Um, this pink dye I used was quite cheap and it lasted all right up here other than my roots. But it hasn't lasted that well down here. Although I probably was asking a bit too much of it down here where it was quite dark. Anyway, I will at least wash it because it feels like bleh at the moment. And I, after my run, feel a little bit like bleh. But I'm very proud of myself. I'm getting better and better at running. So hooray for me. Now that I finally have this beeping stopped, I might go and have a relaxing bath. Hello. Let's update in the supermarket car park just for a change because... Here I am in a different place. So I don't feel like I've done very much since I last talked to you. I feel like I've been really unproductive and I want to try and get back to being productive today, maybe? Um, although I say I haven't been productive, but I did read this last night. I guess the problem is often when I'm unproductive at all the things I should be doing, I'm productive at reading because I'm reading instead of doing the things I should be doing. Uh, but anyway. I finished reading this. I do think this was the best book in the series. I did get a little bit sick of Guinevere every time she's like, I know what's going on. You guys don't understand. I'm going to go and do this thing. I'm sure it's the right thing. And then it's not the right thing. Yeah, every time she's like, I figured it out. I know what's happening. I just need to go and do this thing. No, <laughs> don't do it. Um, so a lot of the trouble is just caused by her trying to solve the other problems but solving them in weird ways and getting herself into trouble but still I did really enjoy it. I love the female friendships in this. I would say there's kind of a sapphic element in it and I mm, it felt a little bit like queer baiting because nothing happened with it despite it being quite a strong element to the story so I'm not sure what was up with that, why we didn't get that. What's this bit of light on me? Get off me! There's a bird watching me film. <laughs> anyway, I did really enjoy this. It wasn't perfect. There were definitely some parts where the writing wasn't clear. And, you know, as I said, if 
few disappointing things about the end, but overall I really enjoyed the way she adapted the Camelot story and a lot of the themes about compassion and kindness. And considering that I almost DNF this series after the first book, I'm quite pleased to have actually enjoyed that. Um, the other thing I have been doing is listening to Fires of Heaven. I still have four hours to go. I wanted to be finished it by today. I'm annoyed that this has taken me more than a week to read. Why is it taking me so long? Also, it's kind of weird because I feel like things are happening, but at the same time, I, when I try to think about what happened in this particular book, I'm like, well, Rand was mucking around, the girls were hiding in the circus, we have learned more about the Forsaken, who I find quite interesting, and I almost wish the story was actually just from their perspective, but I guess I understand why we've chosen to have it following these other characters. But yeah, I'm four hours to the end of the audiobook, and I don't feel like I can see where we're heading for the ending. Like, I'm not sure what the big conflict is that's going to be resolved, because there's so much going on, it's all so big, there's no way it can be resolved in this book. But I guess the girls will get where they're going, get out of the circus, and then we can see what happens in the next book. We'll see, we'll see. Anyway, I should go and do my supermarket shopping, and then I can try and be productive today. Try. Hello. So, firstly, let's address the fact that in a moment of weakness, I cut myself a fringe. Basically, I've had all this eczema in my, kind of my hairline, and I know sun makes it worse, and... Also, I just feel annoyed about it all the time, so I decided to kind of cover it up, which will mean it gets less sun, and also I won't have to look at it, I'll be less tempted to pick at it, but did I need a fringe like this? Is this the fringe I want? Do I want to cut it more? I don't know. It's been a while since I cut a fringe, and this is very different from any fringe I've really cut before, but maybe it's what I want, or maybe not. I don't I don't know, but this is what we've got. So anyway, yesterday I did manage to finish off Fires of Heaven and I wanted to tell you a few things about it. Do you know, I wrote down some notes and I'm not organized enough to actually have them with me. But anyway, like I have found with the previous books, it did in the end kind of come together in an exciting way, which I should have predicted, but because it always seems so directionless, I always have my doubts that it's gonna happen, but it happened. I am a little bit annoyed that it seems like Bran's gonna end up with like 50 million wives because apparently every girl likes him and like why because I don't like him so that's somewhat frustrating. Uh, the other thing that happened because I was reading it at the same time as the Excalibur curse uh, I realized that a lot more of the names than I'd realized are like Arthurian inspired. Previously I had noticed that most of the royal family seemed to have Arthurian inspired names but I thought it was just that family but in the Excalibur Curse, it mentioned a character called Nynaeve. So I, th I think maybe a lot of the names are Arthurian inspired and I just don't know enough about kind of that era or that mythology. And I do actually think some of the other mythology might be woven in. One thing, I'm listening to the audiobooks and the last few audiobooks I've listened to have all had this interview of Robert Jordan at the end of them and it's the same interview every time. <laughs> So I didn't listen to it this time, I've already listened to it twice before, but he does talk about how um, a lot of the same mythology exists both in their world and in our world, or something along those lines, um, and I do see a few Arthurian things in there, as well as some other things, so that's interesting. But I do think I might take a little bit of a break before I pick up book six of The Wheel of Time, just because it's a lot, and they're quite slow. And I want to make the argument that maybe I want things to sit with me for a while, but I actually feel like I will just forget about everything. <laughs> but I don't know. We'll see what happens. But I guess that is going to be all for this reading vlog for now. Uh, do let me know if you've been reading The Wheel of Time, how you're finding it, or if you've read any of the Camelot Rising series or anything by Kirsten White, I'd be interested. Uh, otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're doing well, and I will see you next time.